Hey, Richmond, how you doing? Dave Hyde of the Sun hey. hey, Dave, how you doing, sir? Not, not too bad. Wish it was a better subject here, but uh, you must have some good uh, Shula stories that when people ask you what was he like to play for, um, come to mind. Anything, uh, anything for you? Yeah, uh, you know, it, it was already established when I got there, but um, the thing that sticks out to me is that he was a very uh, disciplined coach, uh, uh, very intelligent, always preached the mental aspect of the game, not making mental mistakes, not doing things to beat yourselves. And um, I guess it just gave me an understanding of coming from college to the professional level of how much difference there isn't much difference most of the time in between the um, talent level that's on, you know, the opposing team. So any little edge you can get and, and being mentally prepared and not making mental mistakes and, and penalties and stuff like that was a huge thing that he stressed from day one. And it was the little things. And I think that's definitely what stands out when you ask me that question. Chris Perkins. Hey, Richmond, how you doing? Hey, Chris, how you doing? I'm doing well. Um, hey, I've got two things to ask you about here. One uh, kind of serious and one kind of funny. I've, I've had a couple of players tell me that Shula really broke down the game to them and let them understand the game because he would always go over things such as goal line offense and, and third down stats. So if you could talk about that. And, and then the other thing, apparently he had this book that he used to carry fines. He used to record fines and, and things like that. Or if you're familiar with that, uh, if you could talk about that also. Um, well, the thing is, is that I, I think when, when you talk about the uh, um, the statistics that he went over, we did that after every football game, win or lose. And I think it just drove home the point of he knew what he was talking about rather than some guy saying, well, you ain't got to do that because it's not that big of a deal. Well, when you actually go through third down efficiency or, you know, we had this many penalties and he would go over if you had a penalty, say like on third down, that instead of it being third and five and you get a holding penalty and it's third or 15, but you, you actually gain 12 yards. Well, if you didn't have a penalty, you actually get the first down and you keep the chains moving. So he was real particular and um, would always go over that. We would always go over that. Uh, and that was one of the first things I noticed about when we would get on the buses was that um, – uh, Harvey Green would have the stat sheets from each team, uh, passing, rushing, this and that. He would look at all that. And I can remember like Marino would look at it. Certain players would look at it more like Marino, the coaches and stuff like that. But um, as far as fines, the biggest thing was I remember uh, weigh-in day. And you did not want to be overweight because – not only would he announce your name, but he would announce how many pounds you were actually overweight. And it, I, I think it just put a, a, a pressure on you to make sure that you wanted to make your weight because you didn't want your name called out in that meeting because not only did Coach Shula know, but everybody on the team knew who was overweight or whatever. And even though, you know, some guys struggle because I, I was one of them sometimes, I have to get in the hot tub to try to lose a pound or two to, to, to get it. You want to do whatever possible not to have your name called out in those meetings. Let's go with Hal. Hey, uh, Richmond, I, I wanted to ask you a little bit about the, the fact that a, a lot of players, especially from the 70s, 80s, and, and I'm sure in the 90s, talk about how some of the values that Shula instilled in them helped them after football whether in the business world or what have you. Um, what do you know about that? What, what was it that he instilled in you to help you succeed even after football? Well, when you ask that question, it, it just goes back to one incident with me. And it was my second year in the league. And um, I hurt my knee over in Tokyo in a preseason game. And I ended up missing the first two um, regular season games. And then I got back. But when I got back, I wasn't playing at the level that I was like my previous year. So I can remember, you know, different reporters or people in the media would ask you, hey, what percentage are you 100 percent? This and that. I, I'd say no. Uh, 
sorry about that, my earpiece fell out. That um, they would say, you know, what percentage are you? And, and I was just basically letting them know I wasn't 100% this and that. Well, I get the famous call to Coach Shula's office. And any anybody knows play for Coach Shula, media, whatever. If you get called in his office, it's not a good thing. So calls me in there and he's like, hey, you know, what is this you're putting in the paper? You know, you got to find a way to play. He said, if you hurt, that's different. But if you injure, you got to find a way. He said, because everybody plays with some little nagging injury. Nobody goes through the season just 100%. And, uh, you know, it pissed me off because I was trying, but then after I calmed down, I thought about it, and he was telling me what was actually what was true. And he said, you know, that doesn't matter. You got to find a way. So I had – it just caused me to really focus in and say, okay, I got to be more technically sound. Yeah, I know I, I'm not feeling 100%, but I can still go out here and be effective and – that transitions not only in football, but it transitions in life. So um, that's the great thing when you learn something like that. A lot of times uh, when people are brutal, brutally honest with you, it might piss you off at first, but if you really think about it and grasp what they're trying to say, and you know that person truly cares about you and want to see you succeed, um, that was that moment for me with Coach Shula. And it, it's, it's, it's carried on with me for years after I've even played football.